Hello and welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the Royal Rumble campaign. A campaign with around uh, 100 mods in Legendary Iron Man difficulty, which are, I would say, the conglomerate of evil, the collection of horrors. Everything that makes the game more difficult is wonderfully integrated in here. Double squad side, uh, as well as yellow alert, ABA, and hundreds of other just absolutely unfair mods jammed into this compilation of Doom. And we're just going to have fun with it. Uh, whilst we're going to be completely and utterly destroyed, this easy mission to get Jennifer Welch out of uh, the western area in the US could give us an engineer that would actually help us with a start. But before we can do that, we would need to win the mission. Toxic and Grell are going to be with us. Uh, both of them are already having their promotion. And we rolled for Sonar and Dilly G to also join us additionally. The cool part about one of the mods that I installed for early preview is it at least gives you the tiles. So we're going to fight in the subway. And it's potentially going to be 10-ish enemies. And I am... Very much hoping that we're going to see some of the new, more harsh versions of enemies. So, let's jump into the action and see what XCOM has got for us. And we are landing in the sewers. Let's go, boys. So, we got a nice little high ground here. Alright, so the transmitters are always a bit of a tricky situation. You do have those individual little transmitters and then you need to just shut that main station down. It is unfortunately kind of a race against the time with uh, rookies. That's never a fun type of mission to play through. So we will be needing to be very aggressive in the hopes of making up rounds. And that was a purifier. Okay, that must be one of the new units. I would say we can move into full cover here. <laughs> On it. And uh, Dilly G runs up as well. Trying to take the high ground here, mostly. All right, so the combat drone, I think that's the long war equivalent of a stun type of drone. And then we got a purge. Ooh, that's a scary voice pick. I love it. Really well done, whoever recorded that voice pick. Fantastic. Good copy. Moving on target. Okay, so moving up. I'm just wondering, are we maybe uh, opening this up by removing by removing both of their armor? I think yes. So this could be one of those. We're going into Overwatch, Deli G. Could go into Overwatch as well. Toxic stays back and we have him in reserve. And we're essentially throwing a grenade type of deals. All right, that worked out well. <laughs> worked like a charm. I'm just trying to find the right position okay, I'll go. to get us one more time, unit. Network separation, 
needs to be delayed and we need to start as early as possible. Now, one problem with the yellow alert will be if anyone has heard what has just happened, they will move into our direction and we de facto need to rush to those network separation stations ASAP. So we got some high ground here, we got some high ground there. Great, so far so good. Let's just make sure there's no network separation uh, there, but we can move all the way up here. I'm staying out of line of sight specifically to not pull additional packs. Let's do move, uh, blue moves first, as always. This might pull, which is kind of suboptimal because we should have blue move with everybody first. It's not the end of the day, but... I could have played that a little bit better. I can still completely move out of line of sight. I'm trusting you here. Full cover. High ground. Oh, that could be a kill. There we go. Love the high ground. But I also love to move forward because we are in deep trouble if we wouldn't move forward. So moving in, yes. And this here would not get us out of line of sight, but this here would. Sectoid can move to here and then try mind spin. Well, it's not optimal, but it, it could work. Sector could move to here and then try a mind spin. Also not optimal, but in both of the cases, we are in a good position for a follow up. That's actually a stupid position for him. That's a very bad position. One of the worst that he could have chosen because we can simply explode that. <laughs> okay. That's one option. Before we move into that type of option, can we somehow get him out of full cover? I mean, yes, we could. And I just saw that we can even throw a grenade all the way up here. That might be the first thing to do. He unfortunately landed behind half cover. Okay, well, that's not optimal, but I'm still trying to optimize uh, the time units spent. This here will remove uh, Overwatch, but also deal plenty of damage. There we go. That might pull another pack. No, it does not. That's great. Let's get that sectored. Good, moving into another full cover. And from now on, we need to <clears throat> kill quite a few of these uh, transmitters. Okay. 
looked like a bit of a crappy turn, but it actually turned out all right. I'm continuing to move forward just because we don't have a lot of time. So we're moving in. Getting a couple of extra turns, really. And next turn we need to take the high ground. There is an open door, which indicates to me that this might trigger if we're moving up. Close door here, so that's safer to effectively go there. Let's do this. Okay, no one there. Fantastic. feeling it. I'm not feeling the need to actually go there. This here should be okay and not trigger for now and I'd rather reload and keep it safe for one more turn. Deli G begins to move up as well and somehow has triggered which is interesting. Which is very interesting because it must have happened due to his movement. Somewhere down here it happened. Okay, we're continuing to move forward. Uh, I guess that'll be okay. Trying to get that uh, flank shot and kill him. Fortunately, a miss. It's a bummer. Alright, taking one off. We're okay on a timer perspective. But I could also try to reload. We're really low on ammunition. Let's do that. Mind spin. Just disorientation, that's good. Double move, okay, cool. Uh, okay I like the, the idea of high ground and really aggressive movement and even if that means we would be flanked from this guy. But yeah, that was helpful. That was very helpful. But we know the, the other one is right down there.
All right, I think we're aggressively pushing in. Shotgun to the face. Close, but not quiet. Flanking low ground will be as good as no flanking high ground. 50-50. Come on. There we go. All right, we know no more enemies are here. Might as well buy us some time. Finally. Okay, that was an interesting firefight. Overall, it worked out well, but we also had some obstacles. Like, that was not as clean as I wish it would have been. Or to quote a recent meme, that was suboptimal. Alright, this gives us enough time. Nice little move in. Good, Sonar is charging forward. Takes the point position. Luckily for us, we already killed everybody. And that will solve the problem. Fantastic. Signal confirmed. Export charges are active. All right. That was a good mission. Good starter into this campaign. The new enemies so far haven't really shown up uh, largely. I don't know what the purgers are doing. But their voice pack is fantastic. Uh, they seem to have fire ammunition and at least they deal quite a bit more damage than the normal enemies. 3 to 5 is already deadly on any of our operators at this point. Plus they do have a decent crit chance on top of it. So I'm wondering if uh, these enemies are foreshadowing a little bit just how overtuned uh, the other enemies are. Typically, you're not playing in the second mission and automatically uh, get uh, threatened to be one shot. Great. Sonar is uh, a ranger this time. Love it. Good job, buddy. Uh, we're going for medical protocol. No experimentations in this run. And we have another sniper with Dilly G in the house. Nice little Alarium core here. And drone corpses. New objective added. Very good. So we got an engineer. That's a fantastic start to the first month. Got an engineer, got a scientist. It's actually almost like a dream start come true. We're going to use Jennifer here to start the extraction. And in terms of armory, just double checking. We got Grail here. Toxic did a fantastic job. We got Sonar now, who got promoted. Uh, just got to give him the right colors, really. So he might be our uh, go-to person as a ranger and we got Daily G here skeptics in the movement but we've got bigger things to worry about than a man on a screen interesting outfit for a sniper okay so we got the uh, infamous 4 covered which uh, will give us a good starting point into this mission and in within the end of uh, the first month, we're getting the GTS uh, build up. Plus, I will focus on extractions at this point just to play efficiently. There is the Black Side mission that we all know and love so much. Are we going to go for three rookies or are we going to go for supplies which are more universal 
in nature. I think we're going for the supplies. Nothing against rookies, but supplies are just more favorable at this point. Good, that allows us to at least use PCSs, which is great, and we get access to an infirmary. I would go for resistance communication quickly so that we can expand. Okay, so far so good. And we got another mission, which would give us yet another sign. Are you kidding me? This is great. Uh, so we get another scientist, we get 100 intel, uh, we got uh, Roby here as another ranger, and we got uh, Divat as a sharpshooter whom we can get on top of it. Well, that's a mission that uh, you wouldn't want to uh, reject. That sounds like an awesome mission. Plus we got ourselves 62 supplies, which are a little bit worse than the rookies, but more universally usable. And I think that sounds like an overall good approach. I would like to upgrade your weapon with the only upgrade that we do have so far. So Demon has a small laser pointer on his uh, ball pup. And I think we're going to go in with Grell Toxic, uh, Demon and Sonar for now. Just a very aggressive uh, anti-zombie... Uh, team. Normally I would say those missions are almost for free because you're fighting against the lost, but keep in mind our losts are different. We do have uh, the ABA losts and we do have no headshot, so this might actually become a bigger problem as we're going through. In terms of macro uh, and strategy here, I think our research with uh, resistance comms is the right way to go. That'll allow us to expand, uh, get more resources quickly, and at least have a steady uh, supply of supplies, really. Then we're going to go and go for Advent Officer Corps next. Uh, the magnetic weapons are already down to 42 days, which is good. I like what I'm seeing. Hybrid materials isn't bad either, but in itself will not really help us. Uh, the one thing that we could consider is still going for it because even with an increase in research personnel we will never really get it down to less than like three two to three days uh, so there is actually an efficiency to be gained by just researching the smaller ones that would be mind shields which we currently don't need um, and that here would be quite a few uh, special weapons, none of which we immediately need. The axe is nice. Of course, the frost grenade is fantastic. And the sidearm for the sniper isn't bad either. So, but all of that needs proving ground. And I'm not intending to build that very soon. So we're going GTS into resistance ring into extra, um, extra energy. And then I'll play it by ear and uh, see what, what we need next. But uh, potentially uh, extended communication will happen relatively soon afterwards. And maybe then we're going to go into a proving ground. Uh, so it'll take some time before we're actually there. For now, I think it looks quite good, guys. If you enjoy what you're seeing, leave a comment down below. And uh, see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.